Worldwide, according to World Health Organization estimates, about 6 to 7 million people are infected with Chagas disease. Nosotros pensamos y lo decimos siempre que el Chagas es una enfermedad pediátrica. It is an almost radical thesis that Dr. Alche holds about one of the greatest scourges to afflict Latin America. The pediatric doctor and head of the department for parasitology and Chagas disease is sitting in his office in the pediatric hospital Ricardo Gutierrez in Buenos Aires. In fact, the room is no larger than a tiny glass walled cubicle, crammed with patients' records specialist literature and, of course, a computer, above which is hanging a slogan – anyone can change everything. Dr. Alce, a man in his mid-fifties, would never utter such a revolutionary idea flippantly. After all, he has spent most of his professional life researching Chagas disease. But against this backdrop, his rationale is precisely this. Cuando uno ve un adulto infectado, es un niño no tratado, porque en la historia natural la mayoría de las infecciones se producen en la infancia. In principle, Chagas is considered primarily a classic vector transmitted disease. Vectors are living organisms that transfer the pathogen from one infected human or animal to another. In the case of Chagas disease, the parasite is passed on by nocturnal blood-sucking bugs exclusive to Latin America. Scientifically called Triatoma infestans, but commonly known as Vinchuca in Argentina, the bugs carry the causative agent of the Chagas disease, the protozoon Trypanosoma cruzi, with massive effects on the health of large parts of the population. No solamente por la magnitud, la cantidad de personas que que, que afectó y que aún afecta, eh, sino también por el perfil de la población que es afectada, que generalmente es una población eh, vulnerable en términos eh, sociales, lo cual esto genera aún un mayor impacto. Las condiciones de la vivienda es un factor importante porque el vector puede alojarse en viviendas pobres, principalmente es donde no está completa su construcción y aparte vive en los corrales donde la gente tiene sus este, animales. Vinchucas bite humans, mammals, reptiles and birds. They do it usually unnoticed in areas of the body where the skin is thinner. The bugs then suck blood and defecate. This mechanism was first discovered in 1909 by the Brazilian physician and epidemiologist Carlos Chagas after whom the disease was later named. He succeeded in describing the complete mechanism of the disease – causative pathogen, vector, host, clinical manifestation and epidemiology. But he was wrong when he identified the bite itself as the main source of infection. It was instead the French parasitologist Emile Brumt who rightly observed that the transmission occurs when the insect's feces contaminated with the pathogen Trypanosoma cruzi are rubbed into the wound or undamaged mucous membranes. Yet it wasn't until 1969 that the disease in its entirety was correctly described by the British parasitologist Ralph Lainson. And it was also only then that Chagas was finally recognized as a major epidemiological problem. Históricamente, en, eh, si uno ve la evolución desde que ex, eh, ocurrió la genial descripción del Dr. Carlos Chagas en Brasil en 1909 hacia la actualidad, eh, la población principalmente afectada desde su descripción y durante las primeras décadas estaba esencialmente concentrada en las comunidades eh, rurales, pero la migración hizo que eh, nuestras capitales sin riesgo de transmisión vectorial también eh, tengan gran cantidad de personas afectadas que deben ser atendidas. Muy poco, yo vivía en una zona rural donde sabía que existía la vinchuca, creía que todas las vinchucas tenían el, el parásito, en ese tiempo no sabía que era un parásito, 
eh, a raíz de que, de que me enteré que tenía chaga, empecé a buscar más en internet, a saber qué era. Y bueno, y ahí después cuando empecé a tener los síntomas de, de taquicardia, bueno, a buscar saber más. Ahora no quiero saber tanto igual, ¿eh? Understandably so, considering the subsequent course of the disease. After the vinchuca's bite, there is usually inflammatory swelling on the skin surrounding the insect's wound. About half of those freshly infected, predominantly children or people with low immune systems, experience an acute phase lasting one to eight weeks with fever, breathing difficulties, swellings, diarrhea, abdominal pain and enlarged lymph glands, symptoms that are often wrongly diagnosed as flu. After this phase, the symptoms recede and patients think they are cured. Las personas no sienten síntomas y no se preocupan por la enfermedad, no van a los hospitales para hacerse detectar porque no tienen conocimiento, ¿no? Es por definición una enfermedad silenciosa. Las personas no sienten el daño. Esta Contreras substantiates this with experience from her own personal environment. It shows how precisely for this reason the disease is simply disregarded by the population, despite awareness campaigns of the Argentinian Chagas program with posters, flyers, TV and radio spots. Pero yo los veo a las otras, les hablé a mi prima que, que ella tiene un chaga pasivo de decirle, no, ¿por qué no haces el tratamiento? Quizás eh, lo puedes revertir y no, no, no quiere porque como no tiene síntomas no le interesa. But this calm is deceptive. After a period of latency, sometimes lasting up to several decades, on reaching a chronic stage, the malice of the disease is revealed in some 30% of the patients. Symptoms occur, such as cardiac enlargement accompanied by tachycardia, motor impairment and respiratory distress, dilated esophagus with swallowing disorders, simultaneous swelling of liver and spleen, dilation of the colon, rupture or obstruction of the bowels, progressive paralysis of the abdominal tract with loss of weight and chronic constipation, as well as anemia and neurological disorders that can ultimately result in death for around a third of all those carrying the disease. Even more dramatically, besides direct contact with the vinchuca and relatively seldom cases arising from blood transfusions, organ transplants and the intake of infected foods, one particular mode of transmission has grown in significance over the years. The congenital transfer of the disease from mothers to their unborn babies. Dr. Claudia Dominguez is a specialist for perinatal infections which are transmitted by mothers to their unborn children. The vivacious, dedicated doctor works in a public clinic, the Luis Carlos Lago Maggiore Hospital in Mendoza, at the foot of the snow-capped Andes. The same name province in central western Argentina is one of the six regions in the country worst affected by Chagas disease. La mayoría de los niños o los menores de 15 años han adquirido esta enfermedad de una mamá que transmitió durante el embarazo la infección y no se diagnosticó a tiempo para poder tratarse. In the second part of our series on Chagas disease you will learn more about the special risk to children, but also the opportunities of an early treatment. There are basically two medicines available for this treatment. One is benzidazole, originally developed in the early 1970s by Hoffmann La Roche and now produced by the Argentinian company Elia. The other is the substance Nifertimox, made by Bayer, which had already once been granted a license for treating Chagas disease under the trade name Lampit in 1967. Production was halted in 1997 due to insufficient demand, but resumed again in 2000 in consultation with the WHO. Ich denke, dass eben Pharmafirmen sehr oft kritisiert werden dafür, dass sie eben sich nur Krankheiten zuwenden von höher entwickelten Ländern. Und ich denke mir, dass man sich der Kritik oder bei auf sich der Kritik stellt und sagt, wir werden unseren Beitrag leisten. Das Bewusstsein, man muss der Gesellschaft, muss sich auch eben in solchen Gebieten auch engagieren, die, die vielleicht nicht unbedingt unser Main-Geschäft ist. Das hat in den letzten Jahren zugenommen und deswegen auch die Unterstützung für ein Projekt, was sicherlich nicht ein kommerziell attraktives Projekt ist. Trotzdem sagen wir, ja, wir müssen da Ressourcen einsetzen. Thus, since 2000, Bayer has been supporting the WHO with donated medicines 
which since 2012 have amounted to 1 million Lampit tablets a year and is currently developing a new formulation of Nifertimox specifically for children. The treatment is given on an ambulatory basis, so you go to a clinic, uh, you're evaluated uh, by the doctor, you do have a physical exam, you do the testing with the blood test and uh, get a positive blood test and the physical exam and then you're given your medication right there, you begin to take it there and then take it home and you finish it at home and then you're usually asked to come back at, least, at some time points during the course of your treatment to monitor side effects or problems that you may have. And after you finish the regimen, you completed the medication, then you come back for a final visit and all the testing is repeated to see where you are. In theory, this all sounds quite simple, but in practice, things often turn out to be more complicated. Many of the medical institutions that carry out the tests are situated in or near towns and cities. But the majority of those infected live far away in the countryside. They have to work and, ideally, their children go to school. They cannot just up sticks and set off on a journey to the city to be tested for a disease when maybe they don't even know they are infected with it. For Dr. Claudia Dominguez, it is hard to understand why her patients often fail to show up for such essential tests. Only after making a house call on Alejandra, who is ill with Chagas, does the root of the problem become apparent. Alejandra's family offers a perfect example of how Chagas is transferred from mother to child during pregnancy. Here the entire household is ill, from grandmother Mercedes down to granddaughter Alejandra. But it is only the youngest who turns up regularly at the hospital to see Dr. Dominguez. The eight-year-old girl with thick dark plates and a broad gap-toothed grin lives with her family a long way from Mendoza in the countryside where Chagas is endemic. Practically the whole province is steppe. Artificial irrigation has turned it into the largest wine-growing region in Argentina. But for all the success Argentinian wines have enjoyed worldwide, in general the ordinary rural population remains bitterly poor, for which it feels great shame. But why doesn't Mercedes attend the examinations? Al ser diabetica y hipertensa, mm -hmm. eh, a veces en el mes tengo que ir, conseguir un turno para que me vea una diabetóloga, ir un día antes para el otro, o sea, para cuando le den al otro día el turno, para volver el día que le toca el turno. O sea, es, es mucho y si va a hacerse ver una, por una especialidad no puede hacerse atender por otra. Entonces ya eso complica. But it is only after persistent questioning that the 45-year-old housewife discloses the real reason. Por ejemplo, en pasaje nomás, eh, yendo una sola persona, nos gastamos eh, 60 pesos. Uh -huh. Y de ahí, al tenernos que ir el día anterior a las 7 de la tarde, estar allá, ya se toma algo, uh -huh. o cenamos, y al otro día desayunar, y, uh -huh. y se gasta a veces hasta 200, 250 pesos, y uno, eh, al mandar a los chicos a la escuela y todo eso, que uno paga bono para ellos y todo eso, uh -huh. se complica un montón. Y mi marido ahora eh, está desocupado. Uh -huh. Está trabajando, pero el patrón no viene, así que es como si estuviese desocupado. Uh -huh. Y bueno, yo eh, sí tengo una pensión de 3.000 pesos. Mercedes won't openly complain about her situation in front of strangers. Yet, especially in moments she feels unobserved, her expression and body language reveal how despondent she feels. Las personas que tienen la enfermedad de Chagas tienen tendencia a la depresión, viven pensando que van a morir, ¿no? Entonces es una enfermedad que eh, afecta no solo la parte física, sino la parte emocional y que a veces genera un estigma de paciente Chagas y con las personas con Chagas creen que tienen un estigma y a veces son discriminados por, por, por la misma sociedad o por el mismo trabajo, quieren buscar un trabajo y por tener Chagas no los contratan. Dr. Oscar Ledesma Patiño is director of the Country Control Program for Vector-Borne Diseases and, since 2005, head of the regional Chagas Center in Santiago del Estero, capital of the province of the same name. Like Mendoza, it's one of the six provinces of Argentina most vulnerable to Chagas disease. The problem of this indole that we resolved with the issue of the law of the Chagas, which is still in existence, El problema de Chagas hasta no mucho tiempo estaba en vigencia una ley discriminatoria 
que le impedía al infectado Chagásico ingresar a trabajar por el solo hecho de tener un análisis positivo de Chagas. Eso que hacía una lucha de años con el doctor Lugones, el creador de este centro, nos llevó a revertir esta situación. Y hoy no se le exige ese requisito para ingresar a trabajar. ¿Por qué? Porque puede ser un simple infectado y puede prestar cualquier tipo de actividad que no corra en riesgo la vida de otras personas o de ellas mismas. Yet to get a good job you also need good training, something most people in the countryside are still lacking. The National Chagas Program's efforts go beyond the conventional awareness campaigns previously mentioned, even trying to reach the rural population with animated films made for television. Nonetheless, Claudia Dominguez is constantly battling against her patient's lack of education. Hay gente analfabeta todavía que no logra eh, captar por ahí el objetivo del tratamiento, entonces tratamos de que esa gente la vigilemos más de cerca o buscamos un familiar o un vecino que le pueda explicar los horarios de toma de medicación, cómo realizarlo y un poco más de cerca la vigilancia. In addition, the scarcely educated rural population must again and again be informed of the danger coming from the Vinchucas. Culturalmente, quizá es donde más lento va el cambio, mientras el, los pacientes, o la gente en, el, en las zonas rurales considera a la Vinchuca como un elemento más de su, de, de, de su hábitat y como algo que, no, que quizá no le transmite enfermedades. For in the countryside, as in decades, they still fight the vector, the vinchuca. The old straw-covered farmhouses, built of coarse mud bricks, with unsealed doors and windows as well as numerous crevices in the masonry, offer bugs free access. In addition, there is a habit of keeping animals such as dogs, goats and chickens in and around the houses. Their feces and urine serve the vinchucas as food and lure them even stronger. Para controlar el vector necesita continuidad y contiguidad, no parar siempre y una acción al lado de la otra. This is the credo of Jorge Nazir, head of the Department of Vector Control at the Chagas program of the Argentinian province of Santiago del Estero. The fight against the diseases transmitter must therefore be waged without interruptions and with interlinking actions. En Argentina, eh, desde hace muchísimos años, ex existe lo que se llama el control vectorial, pero desde aproximadamente el año 2009, Argentina ha enfrentado eh, fuertemente el control vectorial de manera de que las, todas las provincias de nuestro país puedan cortar la transmisión y esperamos poder realizarlo o que la transmisión se corte en aproximadamente unos 3-4 años más. En la tercera parte de nuestra serie sobre Chagas Disease, You will learn more about Jorge Nazir's work in Santiago del Estero, which in this context seems to be a blueprint for a thoughtful and rigorous vector control. His teams comb the country according to a defined plan, drive daily from village to village, from farm to farm, search armed with protective suits, helmet, respiratory mask and gloves, all houses for vinchucas and then spray insecticides. If this exemplary campaign against vinchucas were adopted in all of Argentina's provinces, or even in all Latin American countries, it would doubtlessly signal a major victory against Chagas disease. But the war would still not have been won. Quite the contrary. Through the large numbers of migrants, the disease has now mushroomed into a global problem. According to WHO estimates, in 2014 some 300,000 Latin American immigrants infected with Chagas were living in North America and 120,000 in Europe. A large proportion of them are women of childbearing age, capable at any time of transmitting Chagas to their children and thereby contributing to the further spread of the disease. So what would it take to win this fight? Once again, a delightful allegory for the situation is given by the pediatric hospital Ricardo Gutierrez in Buenos Aires. Its premises fill an entire block in the famous Recoleta quarter and are enclosed with a long high perimeter wall. The wall was painted all the way around with highly imaginative and exuberant motifs by artists, some of them famous. Now Superman and Snow White, Spider-Man and Mowgli, Yakari and Puss in Boots, 
together with many other heroes and heroines from the world of comics and fairy tales have joined forces to allay children's anxieties about staying in a hospital. It is precisely this kind of interdisciplinary as well as international coalition of experts, institutions, companies and governments that is needed to successfully face down Chagas disease. Para que haya menos enfermos, tiene que haber, no tiene que haber vinchucas y tiene que mejorarse las condiciones eh, socioeconómicas. Ese es el primer factor determinante. El segundo factor es buscar men, mejores drogas, drogas más eficaces. Y el tercer eh, factor para mí es el acceso, facilitar permanentemente desde las áreas públicas y gubernamentales el acceso de los pacientes al sistema de salud. Los pilares fundamentales para poder erradicar la enfermedad están en el control de la mujer embarazada, volvemos a repetir, y de su hijo. No diferenciar la condición social ni económica, porque es una enfermedad que afecta a cualquier persona. Y otro de los modos es la vivienda adecuada que merece cualquier persona en la Tierra. Y eso es lo que favorece eh, desvincular el parásito con la persona. Yo creo que uno de los desafíos más importantes es que los médicos entiendan qué es la enfermedad de Chagas. Que el Chagas es una enfermedad tratable y especialmente curable en los niños. Que podamos tener formulaciones adecuadas para los niños. Que la gente viva en mejores condiciones para no tener el vector en su casa. Y que los políticos entiendan que esto es importante para que la gente esté mejor.